Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in Ken Wapnick's journey through the text of A Course in Miracles, Volume 1, and we are on Chapter 6, The Lessons of Love. We are picking up our reading in The Ego's Strategy, The Mindless Body. Chapter 6, this is 4, 5, and 2. This is perhaps the strangest perception of all if you consider what it really involves. Here is why we never consider what the ego thought system involves, nor realize the insanity of its world. We certainly believe there is a madness here, but most people still hold out hope for sanity. That will never happen here, however, and this recognition is the only sane thought one can have in the world. Understanding this, we leave the door open for our return to true sanity, the mind's decision maker choosing the Holy Spirit. 4534. The ego, which is not real, attempts to persuade the mind which is real that the mind is the ego's learning device, and further that the body is more real than the mind is. No one in his right mind could possibly believe this, and no one in his right mind does believe it. The ego goes even further than that, saying the body is more real than the mind. It tells us the mind is not real at all. Cleverly, the ego uses the mind, its learning device, to convince itself that it does not exist by having us believe in the bodily and mindless dream. We are a body made by other bodies, loved, hated, and ultimately killed by them. The ego's terror is that if we ever return to the right mind, we will simply laugh at the impossibility of such nonsense. The ego uses the body to ensure that we remain mindlessly unaware of its deception, thereby concealing the mind's true power as we now read 5a26-7. through seven. If the mind can heal the body but the body cannot heal the mind, then the mind must be stronger than the body. Every miracle demonstrates this. Recognizing the mind's power as cause with the body merely being an effect allows us to change our mistaken decision, the role of the miracle. As the mind then heals itself, the tyranny of the ego's dream of life and death ends, and we awaken to our eternal life as Christ. When your body and your ego and your dreams are gone, you will know that you will last forever. Perhaps you think this is accomplished through death, but nothing is accomplished through death, because death is nothing. Everything is accomplished through life, and life is of the mind and in the mind. The body neither lives nor dies because it cannot contain you who are life. If we share the same mind, you can overcome death because I did. The body is nothing. This is the first statement of the highly important theme that will appear again and again in the workbook and manual as well. The body is literally nothing. It does not live or die, become sick or healed, see, hear, or think. Like a puppet, it simply follows the mind's orders. Originally made by the ego to be the home of our moribund existence, reinforcing the belief in death as the ultimate punishment for sin, the body becomes transformed in purpose to be the means of our return to the mind, the home of the atonement that gently restores us to everlasting life. 
5A1, 6 through 7. Death is an attempt to resolve conflict by not deciding at all. Like any other impossible solution the ego attempts, it will not work. Death does not resolve anything because it is of the body, not the mind. Yet death too is nothing being but a thought in the ego's illusory mind that dreamed the insane drama of life and death. God did not make the body because it is destructible and therefore not of the kingdom. Here is one of the countless places in A Course in Miracles that states that God did not create the world or the body. As they are destructible, they change, decompose, deteriorate, and die. The world and body are the exact opposite of the changeless and eternal heaven. Mutually exclusive states of life and death, changelessness and change, oneness and separation cannot coexist. Only one can be true, and this fact is the metaphysical basis for Jesus' teachings on forgiveness. We forgive what never happened because it could not happen. Perfect love cannot be destroyed. I love that. Thank you so much for joining with me today. I um, hope you have a beautiful day, and I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to try to keep the closing of my readings a little shorter in case you're reading this one after the other so it's not obnoxious. <laughs> um, that was my point, is that somebody could read through the... Um, through this one after the other, maybe even listen to it while they're driving, um, or just listen to it anytime, but it would move from one to the other. That's why I made the playlist. There's a playlist of each reading, but I will try to keep it short and sweet and not drone on. I love you. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.